looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white infinite combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Ill-Tempered Loner from Crimson Vow. The 4-mana 3-3 Human Werewolf says whenever it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target. We can also give it plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn by paying 1 and a red. And then at night time it transforms into Halpack Avenger, a 4-4 werewolf saying whenever a permanent we control is dealt damage, the Avenger deals that much damage to any target, and we can also pump it up. So there is a very interesting combo we can pull off if we can give Ill-Tempered Loner both Indestructible and Lifelink, which we can generate in two different ways. One is with Angel Fire Ignition, which will put two plus one plus one counters on it, giving Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible and Haste until end of turn. can also flash it back out of the graveyard for four mana. And then the second method is with the Olombok Escort, a 1 mana 1 1 with Vigilance that can be sacrificed to give target creature we control that has a plus 1 plus 5 counter on it, both a lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. So we do need to jump through an additional hoop of putting a plus 1 counter on the loner before the Escort will work, but we can do that pretty easily between Cleric Class, Homestead Courage, and even Showdown of the Skulls. And then once the ill-tempered loner has both indestructible and lifelink, the final step is to somehow deal damage to it, which we could potentially achieve with combat damage if the opponent tries to block it, but the opponent's not always going to cooperate, so we do also have some burn spells to target our own ill-tempered loner with, between our four copies of Spikefield Hazard, four copies of Sacred Fire, and our four copies of Cathartic Pyre, and a lot of these can also double up as either a way to discard and draw with Cathartic Pyre, Spikefield Hazard can be played as a land, and then Sacred Fire also has Flashback, so a card we usually don't mind discarding. And then once we deal damage to our own ill-tempered loner, the ability will trigger, allowing us to redirect that damage, and then once again we'll target our own ill-tempered loner. Thanks to Indestructible, the loner is not going to die due to taking lethal burn damage, and thanks to Lifelink, we're actually gaining a life with every transaction, because when the loner deals damage with its ability, the Lifelink will also apply, allowing us to gain life. So with this combo we can essentially gain infinite life, which is often enough to beat a lot of decks in standard. And then there's also a way for us to deal infinite damage. If we have a cleric class in play and get it to level 2, it says whenever we gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control. So we can potentially put infinite counters on our ill-tempered loner before attacking, and especially if it also has trample from the angel fire ignition, that will be able to close out the game on the spot. So it's a pretty convoluted combo, but the entire deck is designed to pull it off, so hopefully we'll get to see it in action. So quickly going over all the other cards in the deck, we've already talked about Cleric Class. Important to get that infinite damage on level 2 by putting a plus 1 counter whenever we gain life. But even just playing it and having the level 1 gain 1 additional life whenever we gain life is also quite relevant, because we have a lot of cards in the deck that will passively gain a few points of life, so that can help us stay alive against the more aggressive decks. And then on level 3 we can even return the ill-tempered loner from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then thanks to that life gain trigger we'll immediately be able to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, thanks to level 2, which then sets it up to potentially combo off if we have an Olenbok Escort in play, so that's also very useful. Then we have two copies of Homestead Courage, which puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature and gives it Vigilance until end of turn. can also be flashed back for just a single mana, so this is a card we often want to discard to our various looting effects, so we can later flash it back if we need a counter to combo with our Olenbok Escort. And then a full playset of Spikeville Hazard can be played as a land or deal 1 damage to any target, exiling that creature in the process. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Cathartic Pyre, can deal 3 damage to a creature or Planeswalker, or we can discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many cards, so it can also help us assemble the combo. Then Sacred Fire deals 2 damage to any target and gains 2 life, so also pairs nicely with Cleric Class, and can be flashed back for 6 mana, so we usually don't mind discarding it, especially for not up against an aggressive creature deck. And then the full playset of Thrilling Discovery gains two life, so once again pairs with the Cleric class. And then we can discard two cards if we do draw three cards, so it can also help us dig for the missing combo pieces. Then at three mana, Angel Fire Ignition also has flashback, so we could also potentially discard it and still have access to it later. And then of course the full playset of Ill-Tempered Loner, the key card in the deck. 
as well as the full playset of Showdown of the Skulls, which on the first chapter exiles the top four cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we can play those cards. Usually want to wait until we have a bit more mana to work with, so we can make sure we can cast all the spells exiled with Showdown before it goes away. And then on chapters 2 and 3, whenever we cast a spell this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target which we control. So perfect for setting up the Olenbok Escort combo with our ill-tempered loner. Can even cast a burn spell on our loner. Thanks to the trigger from showdown, it will get a counter before the damage applies. And then we can sacrifice the Escort and uh, kick off our combo basically. And then a mana base, very straightforward, no creature lands since that's not really what this deck is trying to do. We've got 7 planes, 7 mountains, 4 of the pathway and 4 copies of sundown pass. I'll be playing this deck in the regular play queue since I don't think this deck is meant for competitive play, but hopefully we'll get to see the combo go off here. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, our hand is kind of uh, redundant here with triple showdown. And it's kind of slow, but we could always discard a showdown to a cathartic pyre if needed. And uh, between the 12 cards we exile, we should be able to hopefully find uh, all the combo pieces. Play Hazard tapped since we need the extra lands. And a Moon Dancer, I might have to take out here before it gets out of hand. I guess we can wait and see if our opponents puts any uh, counters on it. Alright, it just goes for a Unicorn. think I'm still better served killing Moondancer here. Alright, can play Cleric Class and then... Usually we would want to wait on playing Showdown, but I'm probably gonna play one turn four. It's your opponent on green-white life gain. Alright, did not find a loner. Can maybe play Thrilling Discovery next turn. Discarding Homestead Courage and something else. A Lurking Roper can hit pretty hard. As we're down to 12. Alright, Cathartic Pyre can kill Unicorn, so that's probably what we'll do. And then Discovery, discarding... Mountain and Homestead Courage, I think. And then we'll kill the Unicorn while we can. Alright, so that bought us a bit of time. Next turn, can play another showdown, keep hitting our land drops, and hopefully find a loner. When we've got all the card advantage from showdown, we just want to play the control role and try and buy as much time as possible. Did find some white mana, that's great. And then I can Thrilling Discovery, discarding probably just double Cleric class. And yeah, all we're missing is an ill-tempered loner. I've got everything else we need. And the uh, life gain and cleric class doing a good job of keeping us alive for now. They might have wanted to switch up the sequencing there to get an extra plus one counter. Okay, so no loner in sight yet. I can always play Escort and Ignition just to gain a bit of life. Sacred Fire can kill Moon Dancer. So I've got a couple options here. I guess I would want to use Discovery while I can. I don't think I'm leveling up Cleric Class necessarily. So I can Discovery... Maybe discarding Hazards and a land. And then play the Escort before it goes away. Might have wanted to play it first to pick up an extra counter. But that's alright. And then I think I'll Sacred Fire the Moon Dancer over going for Angel for Ignition. And 
and then we'll pass it back. Sacrificed Escort so the Tendrils fizzles and our opponent doesn't gain any life to untap Roper. So yeah, I guess we keep on digging with Showdown. <laughs> Number three. And still no loner. Did exile the fourth Showdown. So... I guess I can go for it. Could also level up Cleric class. So we can just deal infinite damage right away once we combo off. At 12 I'm not too concerned about dying. So... I guess it doesn't matter if I showdown or cleric class, except we maybe buy more time to use all the extra cards we exile. So better to uh, do this now. And then uh, next turn, showdown number three. So let's start here. Still nothing, wow. I'm impressed, 19 cards left, no loners in sight. Uh, I guess we'll play Escort and then double Cathartic Pyre, the Harbinger. And then we might have to get used to the idea of having to win with Escort instead of getting to pull off our combo. The Rescuer gets back Unicorn, but our opponent's on empty here, so no life gain effects we have to worry about. Alright, I guess we'll go on the beat town plan now. Can play another escort and angel fire ignition it. And I guess we'll spread out the counters a little bit. And then I could still sacred fire even on the flashback here. One's about to take it. Alright, so our opponent's at 12. Not really how I imagined this game going, but uh, guess I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand, missing our ill-tempered loner, but thrilling discovery can help us find it. So against blue-white could be a more controlling deck. Probably fine to discard some of my flashback cards. Question is double sacred fire or do I split the difference? I think it is double sacred fire. Right, Showdown is a good one to work towards. Aha, uh -huh, opponent maybe a ramp deck with druid class. So this turn, don't have a whole lot going on. I could discard with cathartic pyre, which could be reasonable still. Don't really need a second cleric class and angel fire ignition we can flash back. Keep my lands. And then ideally I would want to wait on showdown so we can maybe level up cleric class first. Seems fine. And then I'll get extra advantage from showdown being able to potentially play one drop right away. 
and hits additional land drops with it. Opponent going off with the Druid class. They can get it to level 3 here if they want. Opponent animates Lair of the Hydra instead, but does not attack with it somehow. Alright, picked up Ill-Tempered Loner, so I guess I'll play it and then next turn we could combo off with infinite damage even, if it doesn't get answered. And their opponent taps out for Cultivator Colossus, so they're putting a lot of lands in play here, but I think they're still going to be dead to the combo. So, Angel Fire Ignition, Ill Tempered Loner, Cathartic Pyre to deal damage to it. And thanks to the level 2 Cleric class, we can combo off here. Now, once you're at this stage of the combo, I do recommend changing some gameplay options and auto order the triggered abilities so we don't have to click through them. So this is going to take a little bit of clicking, but as you can see, we're gaining infinite life and uh, once we get our loner big enough, we can trample over the Colossus. I do want to reply with good game, but there's a very high likelihood of me redirecting the damage to myself if I attempt that, so I'm gonna save the GG for when we actually attack. I've been burned by that before. Literally. Alright, so... We're at our opponent's life total, but still needs a few points here to trample over Cultivator Colossus enough. Alright, and our opponent explodes. GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got our ill-tempered loner, just missing a way to put counters on it so we can combo with an escort. So showdown of the scalds or homestead courage would both be ideal. For now, guess I'll play hazard tapped. Still have sacred fire as early removal. Facing the nectar pots, fair enough. And now. Uh, Angel Fire Ignition is another way for us to combo with the Loner, so... We can gain infinite life on turn 5, basically. Opponent appears to be a Landfall ramp deck. No shortage of... Ill-tempered loner here. I guess we still need land 5 if we want to combo, since I need to cast Sacred Fire and Ignition in the same turn. Gnarl Professor gonna learn for Containment Breach. Could maybe destroy a uh, Cleric class if that shows up, so wouldn't be able to necessarily deal infinite damage. So we might have to settle for infinite life. Storm the festival, let's see what they hit. A run and seven and a land. Fair enough. And then I guess we'll take five. Alright, there's a land, so we can pull off our combo. Opponent only has a single green untapped, so they shouldn't be able to interact. Alright, and here we go. So, no infinite damage, but infinite life. 
And of course we can still attack with our ill-tempered loner as well. After a while, Arena doesn't want you to uh, be able to combo off quickly, so you have to actually click Resolve, which makes the combo even slower. Now, how much life is enough life? Against what the opponent is trying to do, we're gonna need quite a bit of life, so I'm probably gonna have to keep comboing until time is running out or close to running out. Once again, highlighting the shortcomings of trying to perform infinite combos in a digital game. If you were playing this in paper, you could just say, I can gain a million life. But uh, it's not so simple on Arena. So the final two points we can deal to Ren and Seven, and then attack face. Five minutes later. I'm doing this all in the name of science. All right, the rope is finally here, so we'll have to uh, settle with 350 life, I guess. The forest will be overrun. Opponent may have uh, taken a break, we'll see. But I guess 333 damage on the loner is a nice number. Opponent starts roping, so... Yeah, my guess is they probably uh, are no longer at their keyboard. Luckily we were dealing damage in increments of 2 with Sacred Fire. If we were doing this with Spikefield Hazard, we would only gain one life with each interaction. Alright, go to damage. And now, of course, the game isn't over yet, but the goal would be to eventually assemble the combo once again, but this time with infinite damage and cleric class. Although if you gain enough life, technically you could win by decking, and the opponent has 44 cards left to our 48. So if we had infinite life, and the opponent doesn't have a way to mill us out or have some other alternate win condition, we would essentially win by having the opponent draw from an empty library. So, not the most elegant win condition, but uh, technically would be enough. This is part of the reason why I wouldn't want to play this deck in ranked, because people care more about winning and losing there. And uh, I also don't want to necessarily waste people's time. Alright, so don't have the best attack, although I guess we can pump the Avenger still. To get through, can flash back ignition. I guess that's good enough for now. And then we can pump, giving it two additional power. A few moments later. All right, and there we go. We managed to bore our opponent to death. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's gonna be a mulligan. This we can keep. And I would like to keep Cleric Class, also gives us a way to buy back our loner. And then Sacred Fire might be the least versatile card here. And there's the ignition, so we've got all the pieces we need. Just need to hit a couple land drops and hope the loner doesn't get exiled. And then I'm probably going to level up Cleric class as well. Put under red-white, could have some burn spells in hand. 
As we see Ram Carolus. So this actually somewhat helps us when comboing with the loner as we'll be able to deal more damage to it with Ram Carolus's ability. For now. Could also Cathartic Pyre, Rem. Which might be worth it. Although I do lose a way to deal damage to my own ill-tempered loner, but this just buys me more time. And yeah, I guess level up Cleric class for now, or I could play Loner, have it killed. Alright, opponents got their own Angel for Ignition. So ideally we could wait until we can play Loner and take Ignition in the same turn, but... That's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So I'll play the Lunar. And then... Even if they kill it, I can always bring it back with Cleric Class. Opponent hits for six. Take it. Alright, and uh, Burn Spell over the top should give us infinite damage here. So that was a quick one. Assuming they can't interact with triple white, which I don't think they will. So let me change some options here. Auto order triggered abilities. And that will save me some clicking. Alright, so I need to be able to deal 38 trample damage at least. Probably a little bit more in case I have a revitalize. And our opponent sees it riding on the wall and concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is not amazing. Do have our key card for the combo. But I'm missing any sort of card selection. Don't have the escort to go with courage. But if we draw escort, I guess this hand would be fine. So between Escort, Thrilling Discovery, and Showdown of the Skulls, we do have quite a few good top decks. For now, I guess I'll hang on to Spikefield as a spell. If our opponent plays an Aspirant, we can kill it before any plus one counters happen. Alright, there's the Angel Fire Ignition, so we're pretty close to being able to gain infinite life. Now I could hang on to Sacred Fire to combo with uh, my loner, but I think I'm better off killing Clarion Spirit for now. Just buys me so much more time. And then we'll find another burn spell to combine with this. So, no great turn three. And then hoping the opponent doesn't have like a Brutal Cathar or Skyclave Apparition. Just goes for double Homestead Courage. Alright, backup Loner is good to have. If they exile the first, we can try again. And yeah, then we're just a burn spell away from infinite life, potentially. Another guiding voice. Learns for expanded anatomy. Alright, so we've got a lot of outs between our Pyre, Spikefield Hazard, and Sacred Fire. Thrilling Discovery instead. 
So we can always cast the ignition just to gain a bit of life so we don't die next turn. And maybe discovery first. Although it's a bit risky because I don't want to discard backup loner. And if I discard land courage and I don't draw another land, I wouldn't be able to uh, cast the ignition. So maybe I do discard my second loner here. Alright, another ignition and an escort. So I'm in trouble if my opponent finds a way to exile the loner now. Still hoping for a cheaper burn spell, because I wouldn't be able to ignition and flashback sacred fire easily in the same turn. Opponent attacks. Not sure what they're representing here. Maybe they just want to disturb the shield geist. I cannot really think of any pump spells people usually play that would pump for two here, since they haven't cast another spell, so show of confidence wouldn't be good enough. Bless Defiance. Wow. Okay. Get to kill the spirit token with first strike at least. Alright, so there goes our combo plan, I guess. Still have an escort we can potentially win the game with. Opponent attacks. Mm, I guess I'll take it. Showdown's excellent. And then... Could keep digging with Thrilling Discovery to still maybe assemble the combo after all. Although I'm pretty sure we could just win the game by casting the Angel Fire Ignition too. Play Cleric Class. And then next turn, can maybe cast Discovery or make use of the cards in Exile before they go away. Take three once again, in case of like another Defiance or maybe a Show of Confidence, that's the pump spell I'm more used to seeing. Alright, so a couple options available. Could start with Thrilling Discovery. Another Thrilling Discovery, I suppose. There's a Loner. Won't be able to play it this turn. But I can play this as a land. And then, I guess, attack and kill the chaplain, forcing them to use the pump spell. That opponent's got nothing. So yeah, they would just be dead to another Angel Fire Ignition. Only two toughness, so ignition trampling over would be lethal. But while we're here, we might as well go for the infinite combo just to show that we could. So level this up. Play a loner. Force our opponent to chump. And then next turn, we've got all the pieces in place. Take two. All 
Alrighty. And there we have our combo. If we cast Cathartic Pyre instead of Sacred Fire, we would be dealing damage in increments of 3, so we would also gain a bit more life in the process. But this should be good enough. Make sure we have enough trample damage in case of any shenanigans here. And that should do it. We can deal the last couple points to their flyer, so we can attack unopposed. But trample would also take care of that. And there we go. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our red-white infinite combo deck in action. And yeah, overall the deck's pretty consistent at finding the combo. Now in a more competitive environment you're going to be facing quite a bit more interaction, making it more difficult to actually pull off the combo once you find all the pieces. And as I've mentioned in the video, if you do have the infinite life combo without infinite damage, the game isn't necessarily over on the spot, leading to some awkward situations where people are going to end up wasting a lot of time. So I wouldn't recommend this deck for the arena ladder, but if you can pick it up in paper or just play it for fun, it's a pretty good time. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.